So today I want to start a series of keeping a fire burning. Say neighbor, keep the fire burning. Let us go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse number 6. For this reason, I remind you to, f- to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Ah, this is the apostle. He says what? For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hand. Good news says, for this reason, I remind you to keep alive the gift that God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Apostle Paul is telling young Timothy to fan, to keep the fire burning. There's one thing about fire, people of God. Fire can die off. It is fire that can produce smoke, not smoke that can produce fire. It's easy for fire to die off if you don't know how to keep it burning. Let's go to the second scripture, which is Thessalonians 5, verse number 19. It says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not do what? Do not quench the spirit, which means do not suppress the spirit. Let's go. First Timothy 4.14. Thank you, Jesus. Do not neglect your gift which was given to you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. The gift which was given you throughout through what? Prophecy. Do not neglect your gift which was given through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Maybe as time goes on, I will need to to share what is elders in the body of Christ. What is elders? What, what is it to be an elder in the house of God? Because if the body of elders can be able to impart the gift on a member or on a person through the laying of their hands, elders actually if we are in our position, we are in a spiritual authority. I, I, I believe we will talk because even the Bible tells us that who is qualifying to be an elder? It's very specific. A man with one wife, a man with children loving the Lord, all those things, these are people that are supposed to be elders according to the word of God. Because there is no delicate position in the body of Christ or the church of God like the, the position of an elder. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 6, verse number 12. And 13. It says, The fire on the altar 
must be kept what burning. The fire where people of God must be kept what it must not go out. Huh. Every morning, the priest is to add a firewood and arrange a burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. The fire, is repeating again, must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Keep the fire burning. Say, neighbor, keep the fire burning. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Oh my God. This fire must never go out. Go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood. That's number one. Number two, arrange burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat which is an oil of fellowship offerings on it. It's an instruction. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not Go out. People of God. There is a fire in our bones. After this 21 days we are coming from, after that special Sunday, where you were anointed with oil, there was a fire that was enlightened in your spirit. But instruction of God is this fire must be kept burning always. Those who have been into the culture, I, 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 I want to show you what the dark world is doing and take it from us and we are no longer doing it. There is what we call initiation schools. Mabolo lemopato. Habashanyana balika ramopato. It's what? Fire. People of God, in our relationship with God, we must never let the fire to burn out. As this is going to be a series of three to four sub-series, I want to start somewhere. We are going to talk about today the things that kills the fire. But it's an instruction that on the altar the fire must never run out. But right now, let's talk about an altar called you that needs to keep the fire burning. Every 
Sunday when we meet like this, we must be burning bushes that are not quenching, but yet to revive each other. When God meets Moses, he comes to him as a fire that is burning but not quenching the tree. The tree is not consumed but the fire is burning. Most of us, we get the fire we catch the fire. As the fire continues to burn in our lives, it starts to quench or it starts to consume us. People of God, when the fire of God is in our lives, it also invites the snakes to come out and attack. But at the end, the fire defeats the snakes. There was a time when they were in the island of Malta. The barbarians of that land, they made fire for them. Nothing was happening until Paul himself started to put fire to be more. And the snake got itself on top of Paul. The Bible says it bite him because the barbarians knew how dangerous that snake was. They expected Paul to fall down and die. But because Paul was a man of fire, my Calabaya, even when the snake has beaten him, you see, listen to me, the Bible says we will walk on top of snakes and scorpions, but there are snakes that might hang themselves in your hand. There might be snakes that might bite you. But the Bible says, when Paul realized that the snake is on top, he didn't worry about the snake. He just shook the snake inside the fire and continued his mission. Listen to me, people of God. You must keep the fire. We are a burning generation. We are a generation of fire. We are a nation of fire. Don't allow your fire to quench. Many of you, you are here. There is no more fire in you. Anything that wants to destroy you, it destroys you easily. Because there is no fire. Let me tell you people of God. When you have your fire burning. I am telling you. Even the devil in hell. Cannot stop you. Listen to me. Fire can die. If care is not taken. Fire can do what? My brother. Fire can die. It is your responsibility as a child of God to keep the fire burning. But what are the fire killers, fire extinguishers? You know, when, it's, when there is fire, we need fire extinguisher. Eh? Even the devil has his own. Huh? So you need to be careful of them. Number one, lack of repentance. Say neighbor, lack of repentance. 
a sinful life has a way of quenching the fire of God in you. People of God, the cure of sin is repentance. Repentance is to be sorry of your wrongdoing and not willing to do it again. Listen to me. Your collar, your clothes, and your tears, they can never remove your sin, but repentance does. Sinful life, lack of repentance, kills the fire of God in you. When the fire of God is not there, you become a prey to your enemy. P-R-E-Y. You become a prey to your enemy, which is the devil. God can never reject anyone who repents. Say neighbor, God can never reject anyone who comes in repentance. A sinful nature kills the fire of God. Can I tell you? You are not good doing yourself good though, to have, not have fire in you. You are a prey. You know a prey. Yeah? You are a prey. Let's go to James 5.20. Remember this. Who Whoever turns a sinner from error, from their way, will save them from death and cover over multitudes of sins. When we preach the gospel of Jesus, we are preaching the gospel of repentance. We are preaching the gospel of being set free from sin. People of God, in this time of dominion, time of end time revival, a greatest enemy of your dominion is sinful nature. It is sin that made Adam to be chased out of the garden of Eden where his dominion was exercised. People of God, the cure of sin is repentance. Repent. Jesus is coming soon. Repent that he may find you prepared for him. Without repentance, there is no preparation. People of God, repercussions of sin are great. Say, neighbor. Repercussions of sin are greater. Sin is your worst enemy to your destiny. Sin is worst enemy to who you are. Last week I said 
It is an hour of you to manifest. It's an hour of you to be revealed. But this manifestation will be impossible if sin is involved. Sin is like a spider web. Have you ever seen when a prey of a spider is being catched by the spider web? Huh? Are you aware that there are spider webs that are strong enough to even catch things like snakes? You will try to get over. It is too, listen, spider web is too soft, but it can let you go. That's how sin is without repentance. Have you ever been in a bush? You know that there are spider webs that can even catch you as a human being. The way strong as they are. There are big spiders that make spider web that is so strong for even a human being to get off if he can be caught there. And the enemy, the owner of the spider web, when he has caught the prey, he will just come and eat a little bit. He eats so soft. That's how death works in a sinful life. People of God, repentance. If we lack repentance, fire will die. Number two, the killer of fire, it's offense. Say neighbor, it's offense. An offended heart, the fire will go down. The more you stay in offense, my brother, the fire of God in you diminishes, dies off. Offense is a great fire extinguisher. Can I tell you, people of God, the name offense in Greek, it means scandalon. This scandalon means stumbling block. Offense, people of God. It's a stumbling block. The word scandalon means a trap. Offense, it's a trap of our spiritual lives. It kills the fire. Say neighbor. Offense kills the fire. You know what made John to be caught by Herod? By the time John was caught by Herod, he was offended. If you read your Bible well. This is why Jesus tells him that, tell him what you have seen. And he said, the sick are healed. The dead are raised, demons are cast out, the poor is, go and report to him. And Jesus says, blessed is the one who is not offended because of me. Offense can take you to your death before your time. You are dying more. As long as you are offended. When our hearts are offended, even the spirit of God cannot revive us. The best way to deal with offense, some of you, you are staying like this year. You are offended from 2014. You don't want to even meet me. Maybe I did something to you, I don't know. Maybe you, whatever, I don't know. But even today, it's 2024, you are still offended. You are dying. Remember when God said to Adam and Eve, the day you eat this fruit, you will die. They ate 
ate food, they never died. It was not meaning they were not dying. It, listen to me. The day they ate the food, they saw better. They even saw that they are naked. But it doesn't mean they were not dying. They started dying that day. The day you hold offense, that's the day you start dying. Baby, the Bible tells us that offense will come. People of God, as long as we are alive in this world, we are going to be offended one way or the other. But the danger is to hold on to that offense. This is why when you see me like this, those who offend, no matter what you did to me, I don't care. I have let go. You are the one with your pride. Who doesn't want to come? I don't have. You listen to me. Hi, baula ko panela len namo, wansi amo, how mbatla hape o tlantola kai, tlantola mo, unsi le tenga ye, ah eh, na na sero lo ko panela tavene. I'm just telling you. Let us go to the book of John chapter 6 verse 66. From this time, many of his disciples turned their back and no longer followed him. If you can read, people of God, the verses before that, what made these many disciples to turn their back from Jesus, it's offense. He gave them a deep revelation. And they said, no, this one, we can never, no, 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 no. Listen to me. It is oftentimes Satan uses offense to make the stick of fire to go out from the more bunch of fire. Let me say there is fire. For you as a stick of fire to go out of that fire, he will use offense. And you will think when you are alone, you are more fireful than where you are coming from. People of God, offense is the greatest weapon Satan uses to quench the fire. To deal with offense, my brother, let it go. In some instances, when you meet your offended smile, hello, good morning, and win today. You know, the people who are offended of you, when you, you greet them, it's like you are causing, the Bible says, you're, you are causing fire to come over what? Their heads. Listen to me. If you not get let go of offense, fire will never be in your life. <laughs> Say offense. Be a fire keeper, my brother. Stop this nonsense of offense. In some instances, you will be even offended because you know how offense come. You think you were done wrong, where else actually there was nothing wrong done to you. Your offense come when you start blaming people because of your situation. Some left here because of offense. When you read and calculate their offense, it's because of things that ah, but lo ena mag, o ka offend wa kinto jual. No, how it's able to name kutu sebu shuku hakaka. O buwe ka rine mutu sebu shuku inte mutu sebu shuku le nochena. Can I tell you, people of God, the fire of God in your life must be kept burning. Number three, disappointment. What is it that kills the fire? Disa. 
When your expectations are not met, this can kill the fire. Disappointment, expecting too much will distinguish fire. Listen, when God is not fulfilling your, 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 your expectations, he might be trying to exceed them in the near future. Say disappointment. Say disappointment. Let's go to the book of Luke 32, 24, 32. Let's see, see what disappointment nearly do to the disciples of Jesus. The fire, people of God, listen. When your expectations, mama, are not met, revive yourself. Remember that God may not meet my expectation because he wants to do more than my expectations. He says, they ask each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? When you read in another way, he says, wasn't it like fire burning in us as when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? These are two men who are going to a mouse. Jesus appears. He talks to them. They can't feel Jesus. You understand? So, listen to me. Sometimes your disappointment can make fire to die. Look at how they are. After the Jesus is revealing himself, he said, Ah, was not our hearts not burning in fire? Why we could not realize? Why could I not see this? Why could I not see the death of my mother in the spirit? Why could I not see what this thing will happen in my... You get disappointed. A disappointed prophet. God cannot do anything without revealing it to his servants, the prophet. And when God is as in reveal it, you become what? It is because of my sin. It is that disappointment, my daughter. It kills the fire. It kills what? The fire. Good. 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 You kill the fire. Hey. Look at Ahithophel. Ahithophel knew that his advice and counsel, the Bible says his advice was like of God. But the day a king didn't take his advice, he became disappointed to the point of killing himself. He committed suicide. People of God, we need to be careful of disappointment. Disappointment is so deadly in your spiritual life. You will not achieve anything in life if you can remain in the point of disappointment. When your expectations are not met, disappointed, ah, look at myself. Ah, ah, I prayed, I fasted 21 days. Look at that boy. He has seen a cherubim. A seraphim. Me, I didn't see anything. I was not feeling anything. What people of God? Disappointment. Yo, me. Ah, oh, that day he was anointing people with oil, imparting the gifts in them. He was speaking in the ear of others. Me, he didn't speak anything. Ah, oh, what people of God? Disappointment. That fire is doing what? Quenching down. Say, oh Lord, 
Give me grace to keep fire burning. Number four, busyness. Imbazalwani. Busyness. Yo, you are busy like a bee. Oh, you are busy. Busyness quench the fire. Go to the book that you just opened, Luke 10, 41, 42. Matter, matter. The Lord answered, you are worried and upset of many things. But few things are needed and indeed only one Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. People of God, I speak this to ministers of God. When we become busy, we quench the fire. Ma, the Bible says, Martha was busy with many things. When Jesus came, he wanted to prepare meal for Jesus. He wanted to do this. He wanted to, but Ma, Mary did what? One thing, sit on the feet of Jesus. We are not called to be busy. We are called to be fruitful. We are not called to be busy. We are called to be fruitful. Listen, the day you start being too busy, fire will go away. Mark my weight. You need to maintain fire. Fire is maintained. I'm not saying you must be lazy. You get what I'm trying to say? Busy, it's a result of work without worship. But fruitfulness, it's a result of work with worship. Busy, it's a result of work without God. But fruitfulness, it's a result of work with God. Ubizu traya ho, lukisa kampanya ha. Busy, busy, busy. Fire is going what? Look at what business is doing to you. How low are busy? How low fit are you? How old will you be? Low are you? On a normal lot of thing. Um, Lil. I was alone. We must stop to be too busy. You know, sometimes God can want to talk to you when you are busy. And he wants you to stop everything. Sometimes he can want to interrupt your program. The way we are busy, even when he talks, we can't hear him. We want him to talk the time we are available. You know, we, we are still young in age. We are still having our wives of our youth. Your wife sometimes, even mine, is doing the same. He can see that you are busy with something and he wants to talk to you. And when you don't give her attention, she becomes very offended. And when she becomes very offended, she takes away your peace. And when your peace is away, I remember God. That sometimes we become busy and when God wants to speak to us, we are not, we are busy. He goes away, takes away your peace. This is why they are called helpers. Who is another helper in the Bible? Tell me. Holy Spirit. Busy. 
laziness quench the fire. In some instances as a married man, when I see my wife not happy, when she wants my attention, it reminds me how the Holy Spirit feels when I am too busy, when he wants to talk to me. When I realize it with myself, when I start to be busy with one-on-ones, busyness too much with you, I lack time to go to God and inquire for the solution to your problems. It is better for me to be in a secret room, secret place, Adula. Let me be there more than being with you too much. Because when I come out of secret room, I'm coming out with your solutions. More than when I'm available for you every time here. We speak in the spirit, we talk in the spirit, we communicate in the spirit. You know, in the past, the, in, the, in the past, there was no cell phones and everything. The saints of the past will talk to each other. The one would be in Kwako, another one would be in Deben. Speaking, same time, message arriving. What made Paul, listen to me. When f- we must be careful. What made Paul to see Ananias in a vision? That is going to pray for him. And same Ananias see Paul. And question God and say, is this not the man who is coming to kill us? And God said, no, go to him. He's my vessel. And when he arrives to Paul, he said, brother Paul, the God that appeared on you has come, has sent me to you. People of God, the problem with catching fire it's one. It's either you become a backslider after fire or you become a fire carrier. There are two souls in the Bible. Another one in the book of Samuel. He catch fire after anointing. He meets the company of the prophets and he starts prophesying with them. But because of business, the fire goes down. And he become an apostate backslider. There is another one in the New Testament. He goes to kill the children of God. And he meets the Lord. He meets fire. And keeps the fire. He becomes an apostle. The fire you have received. It's either it's going to give birth to a backslider. Or it's going to give birth to a great apostle or a great prophet. It's your choice. You have met the fire. You have met what? Listen to me. You have met the fire. The choice is yours. Whether you become a backslider or whether you become an apostle. So another soul became a backslider. Another soul became Paul the apostle. But all of them, they got fire. The last thing that kills the fire, it's materialism. Say materialism. When our focus is more on materials, what we get, what we don't get, fire goes down. Look at yourself. Just because you wanted to have something to care for your family, to care, you kill the fire. People of God, you know the fire can even bring food on your table. If you know how to keep the fire, if you seek ye the kingdom first, and all cars, private jets, everything will be added unto you. Go to the book of Matthew 13, verse 22. Look at what materialism can do to a man or a woman who has fire. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word but worries of life 
and deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. In the hand of one man, this book, my brother, has made him to go all over the world to preach the gospel. But in your hand, it's just a book. What is the problem? When materialism is too much in us, fire will quench down. In some instances, God will want you to surrender himself to the point where you don't worry about the clothes you will wear tomorrow. You don't worry about airtime. Fire is quench like a data. Data, data. I don't have data. Your spirit is disturbed. When data is there, you go to wrong sides. You watch nonsense. Whether it's there or not, it's quenching what? Fire. Matthew 19, 21 to 22. Jesus answered, <laughs> if you want to be perfect, go and sell your possession and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man hear this, he went away sad because of a great wealth. <laughs> and they just said, ah, how possible, Lord, a rich man. I can't get it. You have apostles. Most of apostles you see today, even if they are rich, but they don't know about the apostles when they were poor. <laughs> Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I am what Jesus says I am. So these are five things. There are many, but these are main five things that kills fire in you. Ma, One of these five things. One of these five things. Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Jesus. People of God, let us keep the fire burning. Keep it, my sister. I will tell you how to meditate because one of the things to keep it is meditation. Tongues. Yo, my kaya. You, you chazak and chazak. You, you, you understand? We, we, we speak a new language. We meditate. We declare things. You know, meditation that can make you travel the space of time and come back. But let's deal with these things. Number one, lack of repentance. Number two, offense. Number three, disappointment. Number four, busyness. Number five, materialism. Hallelujah. So, people of God, let's keep fire burning. God bless you, sweat, in the midst of your heart. God bless you.